Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, aka Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Hi. Uh, so we got something a little different. We got some uh, abroad in Japan. Somebody had uh, requested some of his videos, and uh, I'm already subscribed. And I've uh, I used to watch his videos a lot, like uh, a few years ago. Uh, this is before 2020 and all the garbage and stuff. So uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but <laughs> it's just, I just, I just to tell you how long it's been. That's four years. Damn, 2020 was four years ago. Um, well, uh, anyway, uh, 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 Japan versus foreign tourists, a uh, worst thing situation. Uh, I've been to Japan, kind of. I've been to Okinawa. That's why I say that, because it is it is Japan, but it's also kind of not. It's it's a different vibe. It's a, it's a tropical island, and it's... Um, I was in the Navy at the time. Uh, yeah, uh, over on uh, Camp Shields, which is inside of Camp or uh, inside of Kadena, I think. Pretty sure it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, I was there in two thousand and six or seven, something like that. Two thousand six, I think. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I didn't really go to a lot of uh, the typical tourist stuff. Uh, I was a young twenty two year old in the Navy, so. Uh, it was a lot of, uh, I went to a banana show that was fun. Uh, uh, yeah, banana show and, um, some guy got pulled up on stage and some, some chick took his belt off and started whipping him with it. It was pretty fun. Um, yeah, it, 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 a lot of drinking, a lot of strip clubs, nothing. Uh, I, I, I was kind of lost. I was kind of lost. Um, so I, I, I was like, I was a young 20 year old. What do you, what do you want? Uh, so uh, I didn't see the cultural site, so we're gonna find out about this. I I, I know there's the um, what was that guy's name? The 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 um, man, what was he? He was a Twitch guy, I think, or a Kick guy. But uh, uh, Somali Johnny, Johnny Somali, yeah. I think we all know about that by now. That was a, okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, stop being a dick. How about that? How about tourists? Stop being a dick in Japan. It's a nice place. Stop messing it up. Anyway. So last week I was in Kyoto having a quiet stroll through the entertainment district of Gion. A stunning area where it's not uncommon to see kimono clad geisha in their striking white makeup wandering up and down the streets. There's an authenticity to Gion, particularly oh, yeah. on the south side with its alleyways and wooden townhouses, a sense that it's remained unchanged. It looks nice. It's a rare thing for a Japanese city. That's why I love it. So imagine my horror when a few days after I left Kyoto, the city announced that it was taking the radical step to ban foreign tourists outright from the very place that I'd just been stumbling around. My initial thoughts were, my God, what did I do wrong? What did I do? Not again. Honestly, I think uh, that's the thumbnail. I, I think uh, KFC is probably all right, right? That's uh, the KFC is big in Japan and uh, Asia in general, especially China. But. Yeah, that's a good but picture. Unfortunately, turns out it was nothing I did, although the blame does indeed reside with foreign tourists. Yeah. More specifically, foreign tourists treating geisha like costume characters in a theme park, getting up close, firing off selfies, touching their kimonos, and even, in some of the worst cases, pulling on their hair. I mean, things were already pretty bad, with signs plastered up the street reminding tourists of the 10,000 yen fine for taking photos without permission. But clearly that wasn't enough, leading to this very sad move, oh. I think. 10,000, that's only a hundred bucks, give or take. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to detour like foreign tourists. I'm sure they have the hundred dollars. Throw them in a Japanese jail for 24 hours. That'd be fun. And see what, see what jail's really like. Ugh. <laughs> Most people would kind of agree is completely understandable. Honestly, I think the solution is actually fairly simple. Dress up members of the Yakuza as geisha mm. and have yeah. them walk around Gion in circles, waiting for unsuspecting tourists to pull on their hair. Is that Bert Kreischer? Did, oh. That would certainly lead <laughs> to some interest. I, I imagine Bert Kreischer would be one of those people. It's like just a horrible tourist. No offense, Bert. But today I want to talk about this and some pretty worrying stories involving foreign tourists because this isn't just a Kyoto problem. There's stories up and down Japan that might shock and surprise you. And it certainly doesn't help that there's been some highly... Teen tourist carves name into... Oh, oh no. Hey, no. Um, yeah, what a, what a dick. <laughs> Whoever that was. Jesus.
Have some respect. Incidents involving oh, hey, there he is. Doing unspeakably shitty things as well. But I'd like to think nobody here who watches these videos would ever I hate grab that guy. a geisha's kimono or defile a sacred temple. I don't want to sit here and give you a stern, condescending lecture. I don't want it to feel like Please, you've been summoned I to get the school off principal's office for bad behavior. Or maybe I do. Maybe I want to come there with power. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny when I chat to people about coming to Japan, <laughs> there's so much fear. Fear about making a faux pas or screwing up the etiquette because Japan does have a lot of rules and things. Yeah, that not they're not going to really care. While you're here, but look, if it, if it's like a little small thing that that it's like um, a common thing, like it's something that they expect a foreigner to mess up, they're like, oh, he doesn't know. It's like whatever. Yeah, generally people are really nice in Japan. Honestly, people say like Canada is the nicest country, and it's like I've been to Canada and Japan. Japan's so much nicer. God. And you could say like, oh, it's a, the service industry is ridiculously just so out of this world. Um, yeah, I, I miss going to a McDonald's and not uh, having the fear of being punched in the face. That's a nice feeling. Here's the thing, you really don't need to worry about putting your foot wrong here. Perhaps with the exception of not taking off your shoes yeah, and don't trampling do that. all over a tatami mat floor. <laughs> in which case you quite literally have to worry about putting your foot wrong. Apart from that, nobody here will ever get mad at you for making a simple, honest mistake. The sort of things you do need to worry about are all common sense things to avoid doing as a decent human being. Case in point, don't carve your fucking name into the bamboo trees of Kyoto's Arashiyama Forest. Ugh, you just uh, the disrespect. I was gonna say it's probably mostly Americans, but there are some. Uh, yeah, I, I I think that's Korean on the right. Pretty sure there's circles in the in the thing. So uh, the left, I I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Ty and Cindy are it's forever in the bamboo tree and cipher, <laughs> cipher, Jaden. Yeah, those are white people names. As has happened with over a hundred trees, often damaging them irreparably to the point that they have to be chopped down. Worse still, there's recently been some highly publicized cases of foreign tourists carving their names into temples and shrines. Just last year, a Canadian teenager ah, admitted to scratching his Canadian. name into the 1200... There you go. They aren't very nice, are they? <laughs> they put on a good front, but we all know if you've ever been to uh, Windsor, then you know... Jesus Christ. year old Toshal Daiji Temple in Nara, treating the UNESCO World Heritage Site as if it were a fucking whiteboard, uh, using his fingernail to carve his name Julian Jesus. into the wood. Defiling a culture. Shocking. Shocking behavior. It is shocking. A Canadian. You know, you never. Imagine my shock. Never see behavior like that from a British person. Well, you would. Uh, but if you graffiti a national treasure in Japan, you could go to prison for five years or get a fine Ooh. of about three hundred thousand yen, two thousand dollars. Fortunately, yeah, though, if you feel bucks. like defacing a world heritage site or being an all-around prick, there is a hack for getting around it. At What's the same that? time, Julian was scratching the letter J into a Japanese temple six thousand miles Ooh. away in Rome. I've been there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they tell you not to do this when you go to the uh, Coliseum. By the way, Coliseum, not that big. I'm going to be honest, Dodger Stadium's a lot bigger. Uh, I, I understand it's like a, one of its kind, like originally, but, uh, you know, it's like... I, honestly, I would say go to the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is fun. Uh, definitely go to the... Um, definitely go to the Vatican. The Vatican is huge, and you'll spend like a good... Like, I spent a good two hours in there. It was a lot of, like, it's crazy how big that place is and how much gold there is. A lot of gold. Um, yeah, other than that, yeah, I went to the Coliseum. Eh, it's okay. You can take it or leave it, honestly. Um, anyway, go. Ivan Sorry. was carving his and his girlfriend's name Don't do that. into the Roman Colosseum. Ivan plus Haley 23. Sounds like a fraught political campaign. Unsurprisingly, <laughs> people weren't happy about this. But luckily, Ivan uh. seemed to get out of it after he wrote a spectacular letter to the mayor of Rome containing what might be the best sentence ever What's written. That? It is with deep embarrassment that only after what regrettably happened did I learn of the antiquity of the monument. Shut the up. Antiquity the of the antiquity. Monument. Yes, that's right. Ivan claimed that only after he'd finished scratching his name into a 2,000-year-old brick, only then did he realize that the Roman Colosseum might be of some oh, historic importance. Uh? I mean, of course, it's a monument of <laughs> Fucking antiquity, it's in gladiator for God's sake. Are you not entertained? Great movie. Are you not entertained? 
I'll admit, I've never understood the thrill of carving one's name into yeah, a piece of wood. So, let's do it right here. Yay! Right now. All right. Oh, and it wasn't the only temple that got defiled either. Just down the road, another ancient temple is the subject of graffiti by what can only oh, be described no. as a shitty Banksy, this time in the form of a cat. My God, what the hell were they thinking? Yes, I understand now. <laughs> the immeasurable Damn. sense of power. You do of rule. <laughs> you try to carve your name into the comment section. Be immortalized. I will. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it right now. Um, here, hold on a second. Just because. There. I told you I was going to do it. And you didn't believe me. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Actually, it's very stupid. That was just for me. Fuck it. God, I hate myself. But look, I think for every Japanese temple or bamboo tree that gets defiled, Natsuki should be allowed to carve his name into a historic relic or item from Hell the offending yeah. nation. Go fuck yourself. Only then will justice truly be served. I, sorry, I keep pausing it, but uh, I used to watch their videos where the him and uh, uh, his name's Chris, right? The abroad in Japan guy. Um, They'd go to like random places in Japan. Those, those were fun videos. Now, some problems caused by foreign tourists were a bit less obvious and a bit more well-meaning. Case in point, recently one of Japan's most famous shrines, oh. Itsukishima, was completely renovated down in Hiroshima. Partly because it was old and decaying, and partly because tourists were shoving coins into oh, the shrine good. itself for what they believed to be was good fortune. Inadvertently damaging the shrine with ever larger cracks and turning it into some sort of massive crumbling Shinto piggy bank. Still, hopefully the Hundreds of coins they were able to extract from the shrine could go towards its multi-million dollar renovation. I mean, when they yeah. finished pulling all those coins out of the shrine, there must have been, you know, 10, 20 dollars. $30. Yeah. But it's not uncommon <laughs> to see news stories pop up about bad behavior from foreign tourists. And one of the most bizarre posts that went viral on Twitter involved this sign in a convenience store emblazoned on the front of the steamed pork bun counter. A quick bit of essential Japanese knowledge, the word kore means this, right? Oh. And when you order on a menu or a shop, kore. you might point and go, ah, oh, kore shitotsu, onagashimasu. One of those, please, or, you know, kore wa pendes, this is a pen. And so it's not uncommon to point at a steamed pork bun and go, ah, oh, kore shitotsu onagashimasu. Right. Yet this note reads, to foreign customers, don't say this one and point. Say steamed bun, please. Okay. Now there's two things That's I weird. love about this. Number one, there's a drawing of what's presumably supposed to be a finger. And it looks anything like mm. an actual finger. That's what's... not what you want to see drawn on the front of the steamed pork bun counter. Mm. Awful. And the second thing I love is that the sign is written in Japanese kanji characters while being aimed at foreign customers uh, yeah. who probably... Yeah, that's odd. Uh, that's very odd. That's it. Okay aren't able to read it in the first place because you know odds are if you can speak japanese you probably will say mikuman onagashimasu steamed pork bun please clearly somebody working at the convenience store mm. has had a traumatic encounter <laughs> and desperately desperately needs to learn how to draw a finger meanwhile in hokkaido the local government was criticized after making a booklet aimed at chinese tourists that was labeled as condescending and offensive oh, with this right. incredible fantastic drawing of a crying toilet oh, covered in filth I mean, yeah, I probably shouldn't say anything, but uh, Chinese tourists and whatnot. Seriously, is there anything <laughs> more worrying than uh -huh. a sentient toilet who's so technologically advanced its mood is determined by the state of its cleanliness? A frightening image of things to come. Toilets and pork buns aside, bad behavior of foreign tourists does have real world implications. A few years ago, one of my favorite temples down in Fukuoka, the yeah, I want to go there. Temple, home to one of the world's largest reclining Buddhas, took the drastic step of turning away groups of non Japanese tourists after a bunch of raging dickheads splashed about in a sacred waterfall and climbed on the roof of the temple. The Nanzoin Temple is genuinely one of the most incredible temples that I've ever been to. And the idea of Looks people cool. turning up and disrespecting the temple by treating it like some kind of fucking bouncy castle is genuinely horrific. But again, their exasperation is completely understandable. Like you understand why they're taking these measures. So what's the future look like for Japan in the face of mass mm -hmm. tourism? It's important to remember that mass tourism is a relatively new concept here. As recently as 20 years- Yeah, there's a, I have a friend, uh, well, internet pal. Uh, she's going to Japan uh, soon, uh, later this year. So uh, I hope Bunny has a good time. <laughs> I don't think she watches my videos, but uh, very nice person. I hope I hope she has a good time. Years ago, they had an average of about five to six million overseas tourists every year. This year, it's predicted to be 
33 million. Ooh. Japan has done such a good job maintaining its traditions yeah. and customs. One and it's why we want to go there. very much at odds with the modern world, and it's what makes the country so profoundly rewarding to explore. And there's no doubt unchecked mass tourism, the kind that the country wants, does run the risk of degrading that magic, particularly in cities like Kyoto. Like I remember filming a video at a sacred mountain temple called Hagoro in Yamagata. And at the time there was a lot of debate amongst the monks and the local practitioners at the idea of actually sharing it at all and encouraging tourists to huh. visit and experience it. The moment God, that you looks commercialize cool. aspects of your culture like that is the moment you know you run the risk of degrading it. Fortunately in that case they kind of struck the right balance by limiting the number of people who could do the tour and using the income they derive from it to help keep those traditions alive. And Kyoto has absolutely benefited from the same thing, opening its doors to all its sacred temples and shrines, mostly without incident, without any problems. With this ban kicking off next month in April, I'll be sad next time I'm in Kyoto, yeah. knowing that one of my favorite areas to stroll around is now strictly off limits. And I sort of worry, where will it end? What other areas might get sort of shut down, um, not just in Kyoto, but around Japan. But at the same time, if it helps preserve the city's identity, and more importantly, helps Geisha feel safe, from ill-mannered idiots, then yeah, it's absolutely for the best. But what do you think, guys? Is banning Taurus a step too far or no. a necessary evil I, to I... preserving Kyoto? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, guys, as always, many thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here Word up. to do it again on Abroad in Japan. As for me, now I've discovered the simple thrills of graffiti. I'm going to go Hell and yeah. a donkey do bad stuff. into the wall. <laughs> Nobody can stop me. <laughs> I have no friends. Do bad I things. Oh, I got a book. Nice. Go bu buy my book. Word up, dude. Um, yeah, that I, that, that was very informative. Uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, if it preserves the city, shut it down. Shut that. Shut down tourism for that place. I mean, there's plenty of places for tourists to go, and you know that are meant for tourists. Like, um, I want to say, like uh, Akihabara. Akihabara is like a good place for tourists. You know, you see all the anime stuff and video games. I don't think the Sega Tower is there anymore. There used to be a Sega video game tower uh, that had just nothing but video games. I heard they shut that down. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, but there's plenty of stuff to do in Japan. They could preserve that for actual Japanese citizens. That'd be great. I wish they'd do that with some of the stuff here, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. There you go. Uh, very informative. I like that guy. Um Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please likey and subscribe down below. It makes me feel real good inside and helps out the channel. Uh, and if you've got any suggestions, this was a suggestion. Um, go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll get to it eventually. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's Friday. Probably when this comes out, it'll be Friday. So uh, I hope you have a good weekend. You made it. Uh, don't uh, be happy. Do happy things. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, bye.